I am releasing a right now rhema word. God has put a pressing on my spirit to release this tonight, September 5th, 2023. It is a late hour. It is past 11 p.m. here in the Mountain Standard time frame, time zone. And so this is an urgent rhema word because it is time sensitive. Anything that the Lord has planted a seed for in your life or any type of baby in the natural or in the spiritual that God has planted within your spirit to birth in this hour, in this appointed time, in this window of time that God has ordained as the appointed time, whether that is 5783, whether that is September for you specifically, I pray that you would take this word back to the Lord in prayer and test every spirit of everything that I ever release and any prophetic voice, but go back to the Lord and ask him what he has planned to be birthed in this appointed time, what he is asking you to bring forth to start, get in position, get to the hospital, get in a, a place where you can birth the promise, whether that's a spiritual hospital and prayer and fasting in a consecrated place, or whether that's you birthing an actual baby and you need to get to the actual hospital, whatever it may be in your life, I pray that you will get yourself in position by seeking the Lord first and foremost, humbling yourself, repenting, and asking the Lord to line up and order your steps anywhere you've been out of alignment. I pray that he would get you back in alignment. There are nine days before this new Jewish Hebrew year comes into play, starting with Rosh Hashanah on September 15th nine days. And in these nine days, I do feel the Lord leading us to focus, focus, focus. God is serious. There are things that have an appointed time. Please do not miss your window. Get in position, get ready to birth this promise. And just know that the birth is only the beginning. You have to get into position to birth the promise. But after a promise is birth, just like a newborn baby, you birth and give labor, go through labor and birth that baby. And then you have to take care of that baby and provide for the baby. And there's so many things and steps that God will walk you through thereafter, but you first have to birth it. And if you fumble the birth, there may not be a promise on the back end for you to care for. So I pray today that you would grab hold of this word, take it with a sense of urgency and get yourself into alignment, position yourself to hear the Lord, remove anything from within you. Uh, through prayer and fasting, through consecration of the Lord, to ask God to remove from you anything that's hindering you from intimacy with him, anything that's hindering you from hearing from the voice of the Lord, or even having a wounded spirit that you're hearing through and it warping and perverting and twisting the word of God coming into your life and entering into a state of delusion. I pray that wherever there has been any misalignment, any delusion, any confusion, we bind it and rebuke it right now in the name of Jesus. And we command it to cease and desist in your life, that the birthing promises and the seeds that have been planted in your life will come to pass right now in the name of Jesus. Let your prayer and petition today to the Lord be, may it be done unto me, Abba Father, according to your word. Bring to pass, Father God, everything that you have promised me, Father God, bring it to pass in this season at the appointed time. If my time is now, bring it to pass according to your word, God. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, this is our prayer and petition. Again, please take this word back to the Lord and understand that it is a sensitive, time-sensitive word. So if you hear this on September 9th or 10th, you have even less time. And I pray that God would give you the spirit of focus and that all procrastination would fall off you in the name of Jesus. And that everything that is meant to be birthed comes to pass in full health, in full intention of the promises that God wants to birth in your life. There is nothing missing and nothing broken in the name of Jesus. These promises are being birthed. No devil in hell, no demon can stop it now. By no means, no one's will, no one's desire will stop or thwart the will of God in your life. Those of you who have done the work and who have stayed faithful, God is bringing it to pass. Congratulations, daughters and sons. Your faith, your obedience will not be put to shame. God has seen every tear. He has felt all the weariness, every heartache, every heartbreak, every disappointment, every bit of discouragement, the enemy threw your way, all the confusion, the procrastination, any type of deception or perversion that the, the Lord has had to really fend off on your behalf. He has been fighting our battles for us as there has been a weariness in this season for his true sons and daughters who have been standing on the promises, standing and covering in stewardship over whoever has been placed under our own stewardship, whether it's ministry, whether it's in family, business, it doesn't matter. If you have been standing faithful and obedient before the Lord, understand that the Lord has stepped in and started fighting these battles in the recent hours because he has had to really carry us when we have been weak, when we have felt weary and not that we were complaining, but really just feeling the weightiness of the call on our life and the intense pushback, the intense mental warfare. I thank you, God, that you have stepped in and fought our battles. We have needed the help in this season. It doesn't matter how anointed, how long you've known the Lord. We have needed 
the Lord's help in every moment we have. And I pray that we continue to need him every moment and to be aware of how much we need the Lord. It is important. And as we walk further and further into the end times, I pray that we have such a great awareness and knowledge and understanding and experience the love of God in every moment because we need that. And even when we know that we feel like God isn't here, that we know that the word of God says that he will never leave us nor forsake us. It doesn't matter what our feelings say. It matters what the word of God says. And that is the only thing, that the only truth, the only rock that we are standing on going forward. I pray that your faith may be encouraged, that your heart may be encouraged. Don't think that this is far off. If God has made you a promise and he has been telling you the time is now, it's now, it's now, it's now. If you keep hearing it, if God has confirmed it and spoken it to you first before you seek any prophetic voices, be very careful to idolize voices. Pray for those who are in leadership. And if you're a leader, I pray that God is leading and showing and reflecting his love for his sons and daughters that he is highlighting to you to intercede on behalf of. Let me just say intercessors rise up. Leaders, people who proclaim the gospel, uh, evangelists, pastors, prophets, apostles, teachers, we need your prayers. Everyone in the body of Christ needs your prayers. I pray that you would get on the watchman wall if you are a watchman and sound the alarm. If you're an intercessor, I pray that you will fall to your knees before the Lord and humble yourself and intercede for God's people. It is needed. If you are a gatekeeper, I pray that you would stand guard at the gate in this season. Please hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying today. The time is now. There is no more delay. We are in a short window before whatever God is starting on starting on Rosh Hashanah. So when that time clock starts and the time is over and the door is shut to 5783, understand just like the 10 virgins, five were wise and five were foolish. Take extra oil, prepare yourself in this hour. Make sure you have enough to get you to the door, to get you through the threshold. God will make a way for you if you would but stand in faith and obedience. Stand on the word of God, read and, and pray daily, all day, every day. Be intimate in your relationship with the Lord. He wants to know you. He wants to have an intimate relationship with you. Stop idolizing and seeking after anything that God has promised and seek the promise maker. Because when you have that, you have everything else already added unto you. You don't need to run and chase after what God has for you. If God has it for you, it's going to chase you down and it will continue to do so. So I pray that you would be encouraged today. Please hear what the word of the Lord is saying and grab hold of it by faith. And don't be a hearer of the word only, but be a doer of the word. Ask God to reveal to you what Bible verses you need to take back to him through this word for your specific life, for your specific promises and seeds that he's planted in you. And if there are seeds that you need to plant in the spirit through prayer, through fasting, or through giving or sowing into any ministry that God has asked you to, through sowing to the poor, whatever it is, I pray that you would have eyes to see and ears to hear in this hour and that you would go forth boldly before the throne of grace. Humble yourself, get the instructions, and step out and obey. Even if you start stepping before this new year, uh, the new year starts, I pray that the Lord God, would, his grace would cover you and that that would be enough that you get up and start obeying and that you keep that forward momentum in this new season and that you step through the threshold and that God will carry you through it. That if you start, if you would but believe God and trust God and do not doubt and do not delay. Delayed obedience is disobedience. Don't delay this to the ninth hour and then you're, you're forced into missing the window of opportunity, missing the door where the bridegroom returns and the door is shut on you. And I don't mean that I'm saying that I know exactly when Jesus is coming back. I mean prophetically in the spirit for the promises and whatever has been promised to you or planted for you to bring a harvest in this season. Whether you're harvesting now or whether you're planting before the window closes, ask God what that means for you. But please don't miss the window. God loves you. God has plans for you. There are appointed times and there are people tied to what he's using and working in and through you. This isn't just about you. It's so much bigger. I pray that you would show and spread the love of God through your obedience and your faith. Grab hold of this word by faith. I pray that you would be encouraged. The eyes of your light, of your the eyes of your heart would be enlightened, that God would remove the scales from your eyes and unstop and unplug your ears in the name of Jesus, that God would purify and cleanse your heart so that you may see and hear him because it says, blessed are those who see and hear God because their hearts are pure. That's paraphrased by the way. <laughs> but the pure in heart shall see God. The pure in heart shall see God. I pray that you would let the Lord purify your heart and mind, renew your mind in the word of God daily. There is no more time for you to delay or to resist or to avoid God. 
I pray that you don't miss this window because these blessings you've been waiting on, I don't want your hope to be deferred. We all can fall short of the glory of God at any point in time. Come back to God, repent for anything you've done, and let the Lord reorder, restore, and redeem you. And don't just be lukewarm. Really know and seek the Father in an intimate relationship so that when the time comes, you know, the Lord Jesus doesn't say, away from me, I never knew you, though you prophesied, though you did miracles and workings in his name, that he never knew you. Be in the spirit of unity in this season. We are not to be in the spirit of division. That comes only from the thief who comes to steal, kill, and destroy. The body of Christ needs to be united under the teachings and the new covenant of Jesus Christ. That is our mission right now. The great commission in unity under Christ, who is the head of the church. Everything we do on earth, including marital covenants, all these godly marriages that everyone's talking about and the Lord has been leading through his spirit, that only reflects the first covenant, which is the covenant between Christ and the church. You are a bride, whether you are a son or a daughter, you are a bride of Christ. And first and foremost, your marriage is to God. Remember that. And for those of you who do remember it, thank God for purging you of everything that has defiled and the sin that so easily entangles. And if you're in the process of walking through that, I pray that God, your petition to God would be, Lord, remove all the sin that so easily entangles from me right now so that I may not perish but have everlasting life through your good promises, through my faith that I profess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that Jesus is Lord and that he died and rose again for my sins. May I stand in agreement and accept the good news of Christ. That should be your prayer petition if you are out of alignment with God or if you don't know God. God sent his son to die for you, to redeem you while you were a sinner. He sent his son to die for you. Let that grab hold of your spirit and penetrate any heart of stone that you may have or that anyone around you may have. Do not allow yourself as you are also going. If God leads you to intercede or to stand in the gap or to lift up somebody or to pray with someone randomly on the street, do not let them perish while you are flourishing because you don't want to stop and take the time to honor what God has asked you or that nudging on your heart. There are people perishing in this hour. Honor the call. And if you don't speak and you are called as a watchman or as a prophet, the blood is on your hands. I pray you speak it. Don't worry about what people think or how you look or how it sounds. It doesn't matter. Their soul matters to God. And if you're the one that he uses and they think you're crazy, it doesn't matter because God's will is done regardless. So I pray that this word has encouraged you. I did not intend for it to be this long, but as the spirit leads and starts speaking, I just surrender and submit all that I am to him. The Holy Spirit is in charge here. This ministry, this house serves the Lord Jesus Christ by the leading of the Holy Spirit, by understanding and the, the foundations of the scriptures, the living word of God. Be encouraged. God is moving in this hour. And he is so faithful and patient that none should perish. If he's been reminding of this, if I'm not the only person uh, prophetically or in your life who has been speaking this to you, any part of this that is for you in this word, grab hold of it. Because if God keeps repeating himself, he is trying to get to you because he does not want you to miss it. Any part of it. God doesn't say, come back and let me restore 10%. God wants to give you 100% of your restoration, of your redemption, of your healing, of your salvation. And if you're new to knowing Christ, or even if you've been in the body of Christ for a long time and you don't know about not only salvation, but then sanctification and glorification, I pray that God would give you an understanding of some wisdom and some clarity in all truth through the leading of the Holy Spirit regarding this. Because you're sanctified after you're saved. Salvation comes first. Sanctification is a purification through the lifestyle of Jesus Christ. And if you have not walked through sanctification, I pray that God would start it now. And that anything that has been out of alignment for your appointed time in your life, that God would bring it to pass speedily, that he will get you ready in his timing. That anything that comes with God in covenant comes with speed. So I pray today that wherever you're out of alignment, that God would get you ready. He would bring you up to speed. He will put you back on the path further than you would have been on the path had you been on it all along. That God would redeem the years the locusts have eaten. But understand that that verse that everyone quotes so heavily comes after Joel 2, where it talks about you rending your heart, not your garments, calling together a sacred fast and a holy assembly, weeping, mourning, and fasting before the Lord your God to turn your heart back to him. Then the, repent, or then the restoration, then the redemption comes. It's not the other way around. 
You can't have restoration and redemption without repentance and consecration to God. Humble yourself and do whatever the Lord says in this season. God loves you. I love you with the love of Christ. And I pray that this message blesses you. And if it convicts you, I'm glad. Be convicted. Take your feet out of wherever they've been standing in the mire or in concrete where you felt like you can't move and you're stagnated. Take your feet out by the empowering of the Holy Spirit and move. Declare and decree that you are no longer stagnant in the name of Jesus. God is not a stagnant God. He will have you in, in a position of waiting for him, but it's not stagnancy. God is not stagnant. Anything else, Holy Spirit? May the love of Christ fill your hearts and minds. May you be led by the Holy Spirit through the love of Christ. May you be used as God's hands and feet. We are the body of Christ, many parts, one body. May we come together like the Church of Acts in a spirit of unity. May we come together under Christ. This has been what God has had on my heart all season. And also, to reiterate, anything that we can put together as humans is always counterfeit. What God brings together is covenant. Covenant only comes from God. So whatever you're in in your life that is counterfeit, I ask you and humbly place before you in conviction of the Holy Spirit to repent and turn back to God. Be, be thyself separate. You are not to be unequally yoked in any area, whether it's a business opportunity, whether it's friendship group, whether it's a marriage or a God-ordained spouse that you think that you have, you are not to be unequally yoked. Come out and be separate from what God has told you to come out from. Stop uniting yourself with unbelievers, whether that's in ministry, business, marriage, whatever. Again, as I'm going to reiterate because the Spirit's leading me to do so. God is reiterating, come out and be separate. What agreement is there between Belial and Jesus? There is none. So pray for people if you have to separate. If God is removing you from their lives or them from yours, pray for them. Bless those who curse you. Pray for your enemies. I know it doesn't always feel great, but it doesn't matter. Our choice to forgive is what God honors. Our obedience to forgiveness. Release unforgiveness. It is one of the biggest snares the enemy uses to keep us out of the promises, the will of God, and in disobedience with open doors and snares and footholds for the devil. Release the unforgiveness. It's not even the person. It's spirits, powers, principalities, spiritual wickedness in high places operating through them. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Any offense that you have taken, release it to the Lord. Hey, God, I, Father, I need your help. I'm having a hard time. I'm feeling offended. Even if you're in the mid-conversation, start praying in your mind. Abba, Father, help me. I need you. Help me, Jesus. Holy Spirit, purify me. Let the fire of God fall and purify out of me anything and everything that is not in alignment with you, God. Everything it can go. Liquidation, sale. Burn it up. Get rid of it. Throw it out, Lord. In the name of Jesus, it's got to go. We cannot serve two masters. Choose this day whom you serve. God isn't playing, y'all. He loves all of his children and he wants all of us to prosper and to walk in the purposes that God has for us. And again, I'm not teaching a prosperity gospel. Listen, it's been rough this season. Those who are anointed and truly follow and are sons and daughters of the most high in an intimate relationship with Christ, we are not perfect. Most of us do not want to be seen or validated by people in the world. We would rather be alone with God all day, every day. Prayer, worship, healing, deliverance in the background because we don't want to be seen. We want to serve. We want to be where the people are. We want to be where we can reach out and touch the body, to lay hands, to touch and agree in the name of Jesus. We're here to serve. The first shall be last and the last shall be first in the name of Jesus. But let us not use that as a means to become prideful. May we always stay meek in heart and in spirit. Not a time when God raises us up to allow pride to grab a foothold in our life. So I pray that as we walk into any promise that God has spoken of our life, any seed that comes to fruition and is harvested, 
right now in the season and in the seasons to come, that we don't allow that to be a snare for us, a stumbling block, nor an idol in our heart. And they can be subtle. And I believe that the enemy, as time goes on, he may be more and more subtle with believers as he's becoming more and more, more overt with the evil sin and wickedness and darkness in the world with believers, I believe it is getting more subtle. He perverts the word just enough to make it a lie. The best deceptions look just like the truth. Be on guard. Keep watch for the enemy. Prowls around like a roaring lion looking for whom he may devour. Do not be isolated in this season nor the seasons to come. Ask God for godly fellowship and always test every spirit and a good tree can't bear bad fruit. So you know them by their fruit. Have eyes to see and ears to hear. Let the Spirit lead you into all truth, understanding, wisdom, knowledge. The Spirit only speaks what it hears from the Father. It is the only solid rock we can stand on is Jesus Christ and the truth of the Holy Spirit, which comes directly from the Father. The truth of the Father. So, I love you guys. Be blessed. This has been a very late post, and I pray that it reaches whoever it needs to reach, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And I pray that we would again walk in the spirit of unity as your church, God your true church. It's not about a building. It's about the body. For where we go, the kingdom of God has come. So may we walk in the spirit of unity in the name of Jesus. May no weapon formed against us prosper. They may form, but they shall not prosper in the name of Jesus. Your will be done, Abba Father, not our will, but your will in the name of Jesus. We lay down and surrender our thoughts, desires, emotions, feelings, beliefs. We lay it down and we ask that you would replace our mental state and preferences and beliefs and lifestyles with your own abba father line up our holy spirit that is within us with the spirit man that's warring against the holy spirit within us may our spirit align with your spirit god in the name of jesus this is our prayer and petition today let it be done unto us according to your word god whatever you have promised to us we can declare it and decree it by name i declare and decree that what god has promised us is coming to pass in the name of jesus and whatever god has asked or excuse me spoken to you whether it's, Father God, I believe in the name of Jesus that you have declared that land is mine, that there is divine recompense coming to the body of Christ and in my family, God. So I declare and decree that I receive the promised land that you have given to me according to your word. Be it unto me according to your word in Jesus' name. This is just an example of how you can pray over the promises that God has said over your life and the verses that he has given you over the season. I pray that you have journaled them or have written them down in your phone. It doesn't matter where, but I pray that God would remind you in this hour what he has promised you so that you can grab hold of it and that the devil would not blind your eyes with a counterfeit veil to blind you long enough to get you to miss the window or the appointed time. Let God reveal it to you. Do not be arrogant or prideful to think, oh, I don't need help. You, we all need help. We all fall short. We are not blameless or sinless. We all need Jesus. And thank God for sending his son. If he does nothing else, he's already done enough by sending Jesus Christ. Praise God. Hallelujah. The finished work on the cross is a precious gift that nothing will ever compare to in this lifetime in the world. I love you. Be blessed. Jesus loves you. And I pray that God would move with speed and that anything that hasn't worked before will work at now in this hour. Don't give up just because it didn't work a day ago or two days ago, but keep moving forward. And if God keeps saying it, do it. Be obedient. Walk it out in faith. Faith without works is dead. Walk it out anyway. What do you have to lose? Looking silly? Looking foolish? If it's being foolish before the Lord, let God be true and every man a liar. Don't worry about what anyone else thinks or says in this hour. You obey God and allow God to bring you in to the threshold of that door before it is shut. Be a wise virgin who brings the oil with them. That when the bridegroom comes for whatever the purposes are in the spirit or in the natural, that you are ready and prepared and that you do not have the door shut on you. And for Jesus to say, I never knew you. He has been sending warnings in this hour. You have a choice to heed it or not to heed it. To heed the warning. Whether you're a Christian, whether you're an unbeliever, whether you're lukewarm, whether you're fully and if God keeps bringing it up, seek the Lord and ask him what he's revealing so that you can be in alignment and obedience and faith to the Lord. And I know I keep repeating things, but as the spirit keeps bringing it up, I'm going to keep saying it until he's finished speaking. And I apologize. I know I've been trying to end this video multiple times. 
as I felt the spirit was closing it out. However, these items are very important and they are on God's heart. There are people hurting in this hour. Be used as a blessing who is blessed. And I just pray that what God has poured into you as a blessed person who is meant to be a blessing to others, that you would go forth and not use your blessing as Esther said initially where she was in the palace and she was comfortable and didn't want to go before the king because she feared for her life. Don't allow that to stop you from serving God's people when you receive the promises and even before you receive them. God wants to use what he's placed on the inside of you, what he's been pruning and preparing for years. I love you. Be blessed. Praise God. Yes, Lord. May your will be done, Father. We are your servants. We surrender everything to you. You get all the glory and all the honor. We praise you. We honor you and we uplift you now. Bless your holy name. In Jesus' name I pray.